Hello everybody, this is Eric and welcome back to another malware analysis video. Today we're going to be looking at a file that is named uh, Comorac. It is a mysterious file, as the intro would suggest, that a viewer sent me saying they were unable to easily determine what this file was. Now after later analysis they thought this might be some sort of crypto miner. Oh, oh right, I already recorded the intro because this is sort of the second take, but I got a lot more stuff going on here. So this is going to be, this is going to be really cool. Um, so I've got a piece of software called Glasswire, in addition to the mystery file that we're going to be investigating. And the cool thing about Glasswire, oh, let me just, let me just fix that and put this into exclusive mode so that we get the best quality. See, looks really good. So one of the things that's cool about Glasswire is that it will be able to show us, not just like Wireshark on a port level, but on an application level, what our software is doing. So, we have our mystery file, which I'm going to extract. First of all, let's disable Windows Defender. Oh, something's, something's going out. Oh yeah, because everything you type in here, because you have the Bing search, is going to Microsoft. But that's fine, we don't care. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Virus Protection, and we're going to do something that you should never do on a real, real computer, unless you're... Just never. There's no reason you should ever do this if anyone tells if any piece of software you download from the internet says to do this it's a virus here we go so i turned off windows defender this means that the vm is entirely unprotected oh and that just phoned home that's interesting learning how much uh, windows phones home but that's okay so we're gonna now we're going to use 7-zip because for whatever reason the archive i was sent does not work with regular windows zip but that's fine let me extract it out the reason we use an encrypted archive is for the same reason that malware distributors do it, is because if you use an encrypted archive, antivirus software is unable to detect it, which is good if you're intentionally downloading malware, it is bad if you are downloading what you believe is legitimate software. So here we go. So here's our mystery file, comaric.exe. We're going to open up Task Manager. Let's see, what, what does Task Manager say? That's another way of just seeing. Because we believe this is a miner, and a miner, if it goes off, and I don't know if it will because it's probably not going to be able to use my VMware GPU to mine, but it can use my processor. I did test this earlier with the GPU pass-through VM. Unfortunately, the recording for that didn't go as planned because you can't directly use OBS to record a GPU pass-through VM, and ultimately it doesn't really matter because it found nothing of interest. So we're going to run the file. Now, thanks to Glasswire, not sponsored, but if, if anyone from Glasswire is watching this video and would like to sponsor me, I'd be happy to do it because I think it's really cool software. And we're going to see. Does... If this software tries to phone home... So far, so good. Let's just verify this runs. Comeric.exe User, UAC virtualization not disabled. Oh, and now GWID Mon has just launched. Where is that? Okay, that's Glasswire. That's okay. Now Comeric has terminated. So, so far, no signs of any. But we disabled this defender. Okay, there we go. And see, look where that went. Windows Explorer info. So it uses Windows Explorer to root this. It goes to pool-phx.sportxml.com. And here's how this file works. It creates a file. It disguises itself as Microsoft software. Why is this going up though if we've completely disabled Windows Defender? But that's what this software seems to do is it disguises itself as Microsoft, which it is not. And it will... Oh, right, that's small, smart screen. Protection-based protection. Check apps and files. Disable. 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 Okay, that's good. So that's all disabled. Now we can run this again. Essentially, what this system is going to do... And this is interesting, because it didn't do this last time. So evidently, Microsoft have updated their definitions to combat this. Is It's going to hide. It's going to connect to a Monero mining pool with a file called services64, which is going to go, let's just go into temp, wait for that to appear. 
One of the minor tweaks of Windows 10, the older versions don't have, is that when a file is changed, Windows Explorer updates in real time, so we don't have to F5 it, but we can if we want to. Go here, date modified. And that way we can see if anything is creating itself in temp. Services 64. There we go. Now this application is very suspicious. Services 64.exe. And then I believe if we go to local and then Microsoft. Maybe it's roaming Microsoft. The next place that this hides is in a file called lives. And they're really determined to pretend to be system files because they have services 64. Services 64 then goes to wr64.com and or not dot sys and this is where it disguises its activity as far as i can tell this system file is completely useless and is only there as a decoy but now it's found its permanent home which is user app data roaming microsoft libs task scheduler and now i'm going to see where this is actually hiding to run itself we may need uh something called auto runs which is a piece of software developed by microsoft that is a part of Windows Sys internals, which allows you to see, because there's, I believe, like 20 different ways that a Windows program can disguise itself. There's 20 different ways Windows programs can automatically run themselves. And some of them are quite stealthy. So here we go. You can see if there's any, maybe that's what the Sys file is doing as well. It might be a driver. So we have VMware, we have services 64. So this is how it hides. It hides in the registry and it shows not verified. So if you want to get rid of this virus, if you have it, first thing you do is you use auto runs and you go here because this is where it's, this is where it initializes. We uncheck that and then we should be able to go to and 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10 which will get us to here where we can delete services 64. Actually we can, because you can always delete, you can delete anything in temp currently in use you can just skip it but you can always safely delete anything in temp now we're going to go to app data roaming microsoft and we're going to delete libs because that folder is not from microsoft it's open in a file okay what's it opening let's si host in there we go now we can more details try again do i have it open in another do i have another explorer window I do. Okay. Move forward. Gone. Now I'm going to delete it from here as well. And in theory, we should now have a clean bill of health and our computer should be unhacked. So we're going to turn Windows Defender back on. And we're going to run a scan. We're going to turn on cloud delivered protection. We want it all back. And we'll turn on sample submission as well, because we got nothing to hide. Yes. And we will soon hopefully see that I have completely removed this virus. Oh, I guess I missed something. So let's see where this is. So you so everyone watching knows. Um did it come back? But we know for a fact that that's so that's odd, because I deleted those files, but maybe we didn't. Maybe they respawned. So those are now gone. So that's good to know. As long as Windows Defender is able to remove them, that makes everything so much safer because it is basically, like Windows Defender has an incredible hegemony on Windows PCs nowadays. So it's basically impossible for software that Windows Defender detects to propagate rapidly unless they have some way of coaxing you by saying, it's normal it's just it's whatever it is that's why it's detecting no i'll give you a little secret if you download a legitimate piece of pirated software it may detect as a false positive but it will call it a medium or low threat and it will call it either a hack tool or a crack a hack tool is a piece of application used for hacking it is not inherently malicious although they could argue that it is riskware because hackers develop it cracking and piracy if it says anything like that activator kms anything like that fine if it says something like you know, something else investigate you can generally type the virus definition to google and if it is a widely used 
crack for a commonly pirated application, you're probably not the first person to have downloaded it. So that's just my advice. I don't encourage piracy or copyright infringement. However, I know that people are not going to listen to that and I do encourage safety. Don't get hacked. That's all for this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy it. Tell, tell me in the comments if you want to see something else tested or any suggestions you have. I'm going to be trying to make a lot more of these videos now because it seems like people really enjoy them and that's really good to know.